I've bought $25 million worth of mineral rights in the past three years. And here are the three things that I always, always, always look for. Howdy folks, my name is Steven Hatcher and welcome to the Minerals Guy channel. On this channel, we talk all things mineral rights and oil and gas. I'm a professional mineral buyer and an oil and gas attorney with over a decade of experience buying, selling, and developing oil and gas properties all across the country. If you're getting value from our content, make sure that you like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you get notified whenever we post new videos. My business acquires thousands of acres of mineral rights all across the country every single year. And here are the three things that we look for in every single deal. First, we always look for existing production on the tract or very close by. We are not wildcat mineral buyers. A lot of times we get people who come to us and say, I've got 3,000 acres in the middle of Wyoming. That's great, right? Well, it depends on where the land is located. If we do some research on the property and figure out that there's not a producing oil and gas well within 20 miles, that property is not for us. Would you rather buy 3,000 acres of mineral rights with no production on it or 300 acres of mineral rights with existing wells and production all around the property? So we're always looking for tracks with existing production, so at least one well. Having production on the track not only allows us to model the cash flows from the existing well, but it also allows us to give value for wells that could or will be drilled in the future. And along those same lines, the next thing that we look for is future development potential. Meaning, is there room for more wells to be drilled in the future? If we look at a tract that's fully drilled out, let's say the tract is in DeSoto Parish, Louisiana, and six wells have already been drilled to the Haynesville Shale Formation, the only thing that we can give value to is the existing cash flow. On the other hand, if only one well has been drilled and there's room for five more, we can model and allocate value value to those future locations. Basically, we have to determine whether there's space for more wells to be drilled so that we know whether or not the operator is coming back at some point in the future. The third thing that we look for are signs of impending development. And these signs include drilling permits, regulatory activities such as unit applications, and other physical activities like land clearing and road construction. All of these activities show us that the operator is gearing up to drill a well. Now, some of this activity could precede drilling by up to two years, but it still helps us to know that the property is on the operator's radar. And the more signs that there are, the more that we can pay for the property. And here's something that a lot of folks don't understand. Timing of development is everything when it comes to buying metal. If I purchase a deal based on the assumption that five new wells are going to be drilled within the next two years, but then they don't get drilled for seven years, then I just lost big time. So the more signs I see of future drilling activity, the more I, as the buyer, can pay for the property. If you're curious about the value of your minerals and you want me to evaluate them, you can get in touch with me today by clicking the link below. I'm also developing a course specifically to teach people my system for buying mineral rights. If you want to jump on our wait list, shoot me an email at steven at mineralsguy.com.